I'm the fourth generation. My great-grandfather, Charles Schmidt, came here from Hampton, Iowa in 1910. They probably came as farmers and uh, recognized almost immediately that it was better the cow than the plow. You know, it was probably not conducive to farming like they had been used to. I think my family adapted pretty well fairly early on to recognize that they could use horses and cows and the grazing land that was available to them to make a living. A lot of our traditions and a lot of the things that we do today really are quite similar to what they had developed early on in the 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way through, you know. We calve more in sync with nature, we calve more May, June. We calve more when the buffalo would calve or when uh, the antelope and the deer, when they have their young ones. We, we try to mimic, you know, our operation in sync with nature. And I think that my family probably did that for many generations out of necessity that, that was just a part of who they were. They had to adapt and live with the land rather than try and farm it or go against it. So I think a lot of what we do nowadays is very similar to what they did at that time. It's just a revitalization of it. And probably we've added some technologies and some new methods that probably my grandpa and his dad would have loved to have had. More fencing, more pastures, meaning more moving cattle, it takes a lot of labor that um, we never used to have to do. But we kind of sacrifice that a little bit in order to benefit the grass. With the, the drought last year, it was, it was tough. The recovery wasn't there because lack of moisture and heat, but this year, the, the pasture we just moved out of, the grass recovered so fast that uh, I was surprised by it. I guess you couldn't even tell that there were cattle in it. We get credit for being cowboys, or we get credit for being horsemen, or we get credit for being cattlemen, but really what we are is grazers. You know, we are grass managers. We are used solar salesmen. We use sunlight and rain and grass. That's what makes our living. We've found a way to market uh, grass through cattle and using the cattle to benefit the grass also. So ultimately, we are grass managers. The habitat that we've developed here through some of these small dams that we have where we're, where we're saving our water, we're grazing right, where we're leaving a lot of residual grass, especially for winter type grazing. We notice that there's a lot more deer and uh, antelope that are able to come here, make a living, and stay here all winter. So consequently, developing a hunting cabin and making a hunting resource out of this has been beneficial too. Once you increase your diversity, you increase the diversity of your insects, which increases the diversity of your small birds, your small animals. You know, you see a, a large diversity of wildlife on this place. Well, it's, it's hard for people to change or to go against the normal way of thinking because everyone wants to manage their cattle, but it's, it's more about managing your grass. You hear people at the sale barn every year Oh, pounds sell, pounds pay the bills. You know, if you're not so worried about how much your calves are weighing at the end of the year, and you're more focused on the grass and a healthy calf that you don't have to go out and doctor or supplement, it's how much work you're really putting into it. It's hard for people to change that mentality. It's not about what we do today or the money that we make or anything. It's kind of about sustainability so that the future generations can learn and go on from what we've done 